Hello, everyone, and welcome to season two of the Warner House. I am your host, Fred Warner, coming coming at you live with all this positive and great energy on this Victory Monday or whatever day this is. And I'm here with my beautiful wife, Sydney Warner, my co-host. Oh, I so I'm co-host today. I'm here with my my co-host and my beautiful, gorgeous wife, Sydney Warner. Right before we started the podcast, Fred was like, I think I want to intro today. So I was like, oh, okay, switch it up a little. You know, Sydney, she got a little whisper in her voice, a little, little cough in her Yeah, I've got a little throat. something going on. So, well, tell the people about it, honey. What, how's your day been? <sighs> well, any day I wake up to my family is a beautiful day. Wow. But. I did wake up with a little something going on. I had I had a migraine all day long, like a bad migraine. And I don't know what it is. I've taken extra strength Tylenol all day long. I didn't eat that much so that – I mean, I don't know. It hasn't, that has nothing to do with the migraine though, I don't think. It's been a rough day for you. Yeah. I mean, you saw me when you got here. Yeah. <laughs> We've had lots of little activities ever since I walked through the door. I mean, that's how it is. That's how it is every day. It is – Dogs throwing up. <laughs> Just, just a mess. dog showing up, baby screaming, rolling around. I'm I mean, I trying. Can deal. I can deal with that. Oh no, the baby, the baby stuff. Oh yeah, no. All day, but it's day. just everything at once. Dinner's not ready. I order stuff for dinner because I've been late all day, and it gets like the meat I was gonna cook gets here and it's frozen. So I, I'm like, okay, well, how are we gonna have dinner now? Oh, the baby's throwing his plate across the kitchen. <laughs> Woo! Fred's covered in carrot. Yeah, I'm looking at my shorts. There's a bunch of just baby food all over my shorts. But you know what? This is real life. Yeah. All right, this guys. Is. This I look is... nuts. My hair, it's fine. I just, today, I have my, oh, I do have my spooky um, sweats today since it's like Halloween week. So I thought I might, you know, I had to take the baby to, I literally haven't changed since 1215. I had to take the baby to his little gym today and it was uh, our Halloween party. So I was like, okay, I'll be festive and put on my spooky sweats. <laughs> Those are spooky? Well, it has a cross. It has like, some, okay, there it is. It has like a skeleton on there. There's a skeleton? So I consider these my Halloween sweats. I Very break them out in October. Very October festive. only. Do we, do we? Do you already talk about what you were wearing uh, for your costume? Halloween no, we costume? haven't talked about Halloween yet. This is this is the Halloween week, so we're gonna wait and talk about Halloween this week. Oh, okay. I'm trying to remember how that last. We didn't say anything about Halloween last episode. No, I think we said that it was gonna be a surprise. Well, no, we were like at the very end. We're like, oh shoot, are we gonna have a podcast before? Sept- I mean, before Halloween, right? All right. Well, turns out we do. Yeah. Well, we're not going to disclose the costumes yet, though. We're gonna we'll wait. talk about it in the, the week after next, and we'll like put up some photos and stuff and show you all the pics. And we're going to take pictures. Gave, you already gave the folks a little sneak peek into the They got a, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So if you, I, today on my stories, I posted him at his little Halloween party with his friends in his costume. And some of the um, moms were talking to me. They're like, are you going to get him two costumes? And I was like, no, I didn't no, even think of that. Absolutely not. Everyone's like, yeah, like sometimes, you know, you do two. And I was like, really? No. I was like, no, one's enough. I got this. Also, I was shocked at how expensive Halloween costumes are. Or Okay, so Pottery Barn came out with a line of Halloween costumes this year. And I got his co- costume off of Pottery Barn. And it was, you know, pricey for a baby. You talking about what he wore today? Yeah. A baby costume that he's going to wear once. But they're top tier quality. I mean, you know, Pottery Barn. Can't go wrong. I got him a costume way early in October and it got here and it did it did not fit him. So then I took it back and then I was like, I might as well just like, you know, bite the bullet and get the really expensive one on Pottery Barn. And it worked out perfect. Wonderful. Honestly, he could have gone a size up, which is crazy because I got him six to 12. Wow. Yeah. And he's seven months old. <laughs> yeah. But no, we had the, the best two-year-old. time at his party. And yes, if you saw my stories, his costume kind of goes with Fred's and I's costume that is still not here. I know. So hopefully it gets here before Thursday or we're going to be in a pickle. Big pickle. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get a little bit more into the Halloween stuff. But, you know, first, I think it's I think it's only right we talk about about Sunday night. Well, can we talk about like date night first? Talk a little bit date about night. just like... Our our last our date night last week we didn't you know we didn't talk. Oh, about okay, that. fine. We can we can switch around the the segments, honey. We can we can we can mix it up a little bit. Oh, since you're the host today, you want to just stick straight to business. Hey, honey, I, I like to bounce around a little bit. 
I I actually like bouncing you're around. Excited I know you're you're a little bit more stick to the script, so that's why I was going to make I'm sure skip. I was going to make sure that we were going to do whatever you wanted to do. But we can bounce around a little bit. No, I think you're very excited to talk about the game. So let's talk about the game. Hey, I'm just excited that we got a win. Totally. That's the exciting part about it. Yeah. Take me through take me through yesterday for you after I saw you. But you know, Fred gets to come home on these late night games and I we see him off at around I don't know, mid afternoon, and then he goes into work. You talking about today? No, no, tomorrow. Yes, uh, yesterday. Yeah, I, I thought you were talking about after you saw me on the field. But yeah, like you mentioned, uh, yeah, I left the house, had my outfit on, feeling good, feeling great. Abercrombie shout out. Best oh, I game. saw that today. I liked your Instagram post, and I was thinking you were just like excited about your outfit, and then I looked at the caption, and I was like, okay, it was a sponsored post because that's super not like you to just post a picture of yourself like wow. in an outfit. Mm -hmm. But that's some that's some people's jam. I loved I loved doing that, but hey, it's not you. Listen, honey. Yeah. You do what you got to do. And I will say my outfit this game was a hit. Wow. Like a Talk hit. Talk about it then. Everyone was saying it was just like one of my best look, my best look yet. That's what everybody said. You always look amazing. And honey. I was really skeptical about that outfit because I was telling Fred, like, as a mom, it's like when my stomach's out. I don't know. I'm just like, am I too? Am I not allowed to wear crop stuff anymore because I'm a mom? No, or is this too young? Is this just oh like... Oh my gosh, give me a break. I don't know. I was is this really... too young? Yes. Oh, Lord. I don't like want to be like... Like we're, four, like we're 50. We all know that, you know, there's people, I don't know, that like it might be just like you're trying to hold on to their youth too long and then it like bites them in the butt. I'm like, am I that person now? It's literally what I feel. Oh, heavens. You I know. Uh, I know. So I, I took the, the leap of faith and I just sure. went with the outfit and mm -hmm. it was a hit. It was a hit. And I felt really confident and good in it. So And talk about the, the jersey and how and how it was different. Right. Like, you said somebody made it for you. Yeah. So there's know. a girl on Instagram. Her name's Kelly Daly and she does customs for all the girls, MLB. NBA, NFL, and she is so good on Instagram. So if you saw my jersey, that's who did it. She does, I mean, she doesn't just do the crop jersey. She does, I mean, anything, literally anything you can think of. She is so talented, so good. So she hooked me up, like, next day to that jersey, and I was like, thank you so much. And then it worked out with all the stuff. It just, it was just great. It really just worked out. Wonderful. I felt good. You, you, great. you looked great, too. Oh, wow. Thank you, honey. You felt good in your outfit. Absolutely. You're giving spooky vibes with the green. A little green, a little orange. Yeah. Favorite color. Oh, because of Halloween, no? Yeah. Okay. The orange. I should have. Maybe I should have wore a costume to the game. Did, 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 did people do that? Players around the league wore some costumes, yeah. Oh, okay. I'll have to pull some up for you so you can see. Yeah, I want to see. There's this guy, Miles Garrett, who plays de defensive end for the Browns, and uh. he wears like a like a deck Crazy costume alpha every, every year. Yeah, okay. That's cool. Yeah. He was the Terminator this year. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. He does a good job. Okay. But yeah, talking more about the game, we uh, I saw you on the sideline during warm-ups. Yeah. You decided to uh, switch it up a little bit. I did. I did. Do um, during the first warm-up, not the second warm-up. Loved that. The second wow. warm-up, Fred, I mean, it just it's a, takes so long. Yeah. Because the defense the, comes, oh. out, comes out second, mm -hmm. and then you have to do all your stuff, mm -hmm. and then you have that, what, like 30 seconds to come over and it's like a rush thing and i feel okay like you literally about to play the game like literally in a few minutes and i'm it's just like always rushed and stressful and i felt like it they, i didn't even know if you were gonna be out there i was like okay let's just go see and i was like oh my gosh she's still out here because i've done that before and you weren't out there i was like dang mm. but um yeah i worked out i mean that was that was i think i might do that every game is that right yeah okay. i really like that so just be on the lookout for me got it and I was like, kind of, was I being crazy when I saw you like flailing my arms? I was like, wait, is he embarrassed? Because you weren't really like reacting. And I was like, because I didn't want you to walk in and not see me. No, 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 no. You, when I saw you, you were just like, there was like a security person who was, like, I saw, they were trying uh, to tell you like, uh, miss, you're not allowed to be over here or something. And you were trying to be like, no, you're trying to like point at oh, me and be like, gosh, no. Oh gosh, that lady. Like, no, I was like, no, right no, there. like that's what has She's like, I don't think, I don't know. I don't know. But I usually I just kind of do what I want. If they want to tackle me, just wow. tackle me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it just goes with the theme of uh where would that be crazy if you looked over and i'm like getting into it with the security you're on the ground handcuffs <laughs> <laughs> i'm just like that would be me oh hell no oh, what yeah. a start to the game <laughs> but yes no of course it's always lovely seeing my beautiful wife troy your brother, brother. yeah my, my sister-in-law obviously the homegirls was there always 
So yeah, it was it was great. Whether you come before or after, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Did you like see. the jersey choice this this game? Did you like your outfit? My outfit? Uniform? Like, did you like the jersey? Like, you know, because you have your favorites. Oh, 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 yes. No, I I will, man, I will live and die with the home reds uniforms. Okay. The classic home red, gold pant. Can't go wrong. The throwback reds. Hey, 50 And that's what you wore this game? That's what we wore this See, game. See, I like that. I love all of our uniform combos. Okay. This one, I always have, like, tried to, like, figure out what's the best way to, like, access, I guess, accessorize is the word. But like, what cleats to wear? What color cleats? What color gloves? What color style cleats? it? How do you style it? How do you how do you really stunt? You know what I'm saying? So make sure you feel it. <laughs> make sure you're feeling how you want to feel mm-hmm. out there on that field. So I know what the home reds gold pant. I know exactly what I'm gonna wear. Everybody knows exactly what I'm gonna, what what they're gonna see me wearing. Mm-hmm. So it's just you know I felt good about what I wore yesterday. I like those uniforms. I, th- I thought it was great. Yeah. And then, you know, it's always just like kind of just seeing like pictures after the game is like that, that, that the contrast of the Dallas Cowboy uniforms and the 49er uniforms is always just like a, I don't know. It's just top it tier. Is. It's no, top it is. No, it is. Honestly, yeah. like the contrast between the two jerseys, you know, and there's a reason why there's such a rich, rich history there. Mm-hmm. But anyway, uh, yeah, we knew what time it was. We know it was a, it was a game we had to get and playing on Sunday night. Those just like being sit like standing there for the national anthem, having the Jets go over and everything. I'm like, man, this is just what you live for right here. Mm-hmm. This is it. Sunday night ball game on everything on the line. Got to have it. Mm-hmm. It's not playoffs, but like, man, this is this is pretty good. Um, and yeah, obviously, first half was a little sloppy. wasn't wasn't the best start for us as a team. But then we go into halftime, regroup, eat our little banana or a little. You know, whatever you need to eat to get your little energy stores up. And, uh, you know, I had to give a little little bit of a speech. And I'll save what I said for, you know, for the team. But long story short, I said that we needed to go ahead and get going. Because it wasn't good enough in the first half. And it uh, seemed to have worked. The second half, we came out rumbling. Mm-hmm. And defensively had a little bit of a lapse there at the end, let him back in the game. Oh my gosh, that was stressing me out. I was like, "You are kidding me." Yeah, no, it wasn't ideal. That's what that was. <gasps> the, that was the most frustrating part about the game. But yeah, ultimately we got our chance to go out there and end the game, and we did it. And at the end, so okay, the end. We Purdy like ran for literally like the last play of the game. Purdy was like running, mm-hmm. trying to get a touchdown, and then we had more. To, we had like a minute and something on the clock like we could have my thought was like wait oh why didn't we go and try to score right there are you talking about the, our running back oh was that the running back that wasn't pretty isaac grindle the rookie, i'm not sure it was a literally was running and then he slid at the goal line yeah 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 Yeah, that was the running back okay why did we do that so you do that so then you could just kill like just kneel the kneel the clock out and the game's over why didn't of, we want to score because if you score then I mean, yeah, technically it's a two score game, but then the defense is gonna go back out there and let's say the their offense goes and scores really quick and then kicks an onside kick and then they get the onside mm-hmm. kick and then it, they just still have a chance to end the game for no reason. Even if we had a two up, I don't think so. Technically, it, yes, it shouldn't be a chance at all. Right. The way you're thinking is correct, but technically there's still a the chance. Like even to- if it's a one percent chance, there's still a chance versus zero percent chance. So you would rather like be score a little like have it score a little closer than to like chance it right there, but that's not really a chance. You'd rather just end there's the no game. way they can. You'd rather sc- just take knees and end the game and okay. let the clock run out. Okay. No timeouts left. Got it. And that's what we did. I was like, wait, it ended already. I thought we were gonna gonna do the whole thing again. Like everything was gonna. I was like, wait, and then everybody was like, okay, it's over. I was like, what? You were ready for some more action? I just didn't expect I was not expecting in that moment for the game to end. I was like, oh, wait. It was crazy. The game just ended. I thought that. It should have been over a lot sooner. Yeah. But it's it, good. Hey, we got the win. Got the win. You're feeling good about. I've, I'm, I'm feeling great. This is exactly what we said we needed. Going into a a, a beautiful bye week now. Mm-hmm. Imagine going into bye week if we lost. I can't. I really can't. Can't even imagine that, can you? No. Yeah. Cancel all the little plans, everything. But we, hey, buckle down. Pra- practice every day. Yeah, I know. I would yeah, exactly. Take, you know. So thank God we won. Thank God. Um, players of the game. You know, I got to give a shout out to uh, old Georgie Kittle. 
National Tight Ends Day and him balling out. Like, Who made that out. up? What is that? What is that? He was the, he was the one that created that National Tight Ends Day. Like, just in a random. 2019. He, he just this made day it up. or October, whatever. I think so. Yeah. Well, Got it him. became like more of like a serious thing, but like initially he was like he just made it up and gotcha. on like on a mic'd up and said it's National Tight Ends Day. Got it. And now it's actually like a full blown thing. Good where they, they they keep track of all the. The catches, the touchdowns on oh, from yesterday. Like, okay, that's and cool. it was the most catches by tight ends oh, really? ever. Oh, that's funny. On a single like week. Because they kinda know that or not that they're doing it on purpose, but like they it's obviously in their on their mind. Exactly. Yeah. That's cool. Kind of wild. And then that that brings up the point of after the game when I was doing all those little inter- those little interviews where you're watching me down yeah. to they were asking about like a national linebacker day and they wanted me to like sell it. And oh. I, I didn't really know what to say because I'm like do I really like it? Yeah, like it would be cool to have National Linebacker Day. Yeah, but, you'd be excited for that. I mean, yeah, anybody would love to have their own day, but I'm just, I was trying to figure out like why we should have our own day. But does it, do you really need a reason? You don't need a reason. I'm just kind of make it because. up. Because. <laughs> just make it up. I'll ask George. Yeah. Uh, how, uh, how to do it. Yep. So, yeah, we'll get that going. National Linebacker Day, probably. It should be in like November since your November. birthday's in November. Should put it on my birthday. Yeah. Okay. It'll be my birthday plus National Linebacker Day. That'd be kind of cool. I think okay, linebackers that... all around the league. Are we gonna speak it right now? Stripping, f- stripping footballs, uh, sacking quarterbacks, picking the ball off, mm-hmm. making tackles, all across the league. And that's in the depth of the season. November is when they start getting. They were saying that maybe December. Oh would be really? The day, or the of the month. Why December? That's when it's just grinding. Just out do there. November. You're just trying to December. make it. Grimy football. Do it November. November 19th is basically December. December football. January even maybe. Okay, I'm done. Guys are beat up, bruised up. <laughs> Bodies in shambles. <laughs> By the way, I can't even move my neck right now. That's how sore I am. God. <laughs> I'm over here trying to laugh. Like, do one of these. I'm like, Oop. <laughs> Anyway. Uh, yeah. Talk about shambles, body and shambles. But um, okay, yeah. So enough about that linebacker day. We'll see. We'll, we'll see if we get that in the mix or not. Okay, we're gonna speak it. Um, Brock Purdy, phenomenal. Mm-hmm. What you? What would you say today about about his little running ability? Oh my gosh, he was just surprising me. I, 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 he was doing so good. Mm-hmm. He was just really, really playing. I just like I was like Brock's playing some football. You today. just love when he runs. Yeah, I think I just like it when you the quarterbacks when run. Too. Yeah, it's just like exciting. Which is probably what most fans are thinking. Like, yeah, like. Wow, like and I think I feel like for whatever like reason run. yesterday he was running a lot. Yeah. So I was just like, that's, that's cool. Yeah, I love it when he runs. Yeah. I might go run I'm for just, us. But I'm like, oh my God, like, please don't let anyone hurt you. Like, please. Literally. Like, sometimes he kind of stays up a little bit. <sighs> I'm like, I'm like you can go ahead and get that be careful, slide in. be careful. That's that competitor in him. Mm-hmm. That's why I love him. Debo Samuel looked like he was out there doing his thing. He had that long. Somebody touchdown. said that he was, did he, did he play the whole game or just like a little bit of it? He played the whole game. He played, okay. He had a long touchdown, but it got called back. But oh, that was like my one of those gosh. Ones where it was like, oh, it's Debo time. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just like, Mr. Debo Samuel. Yeah. The lights come on. He shows up. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's just always different, you know, having, out, having him out there versus, you know, when, he, when he's sick, he's sick. Um, and then we talked about the running back. You were talking about who you thought was Brock Purdy, Isaac Grandor, the rookie. Oh, yeah. He did so good. He did so great. Yeah. I mean, our – our uh, our workhorse JP Mason, who's been phenomenal all year, went down. I think reaggravated the shoulder. Is he gonna be okay? He's all right. Yeah, right? you know, he'll be good. Okay, he'll it's good. nothing I, I uh, big, big, big. I can't disclose injury information. Okay, well, I'm gonna go off this even, even if I could, I don't even know what's going. From what on. I saw on the field, I oh. don't. I, I hoping it like I'm just like everyone else saw on the field. Right. Like I'm just like it didn't look big, 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 big. I mean, like I don't know. You never know. I'm hoping that it's not. I yeah, I don't know. Because you jogged I'm, I'm off, which be, is I'm always he'll be fantastic. Yeah. We need him. But then, uh, yeah, young Isaac uh, came in and and did his thing. Oh, so he's yards. he came in for when JP Mason came came mm-hmm. out. Oh, okay. See, does he is he ever in if something wasn't to happen to JP Mason? Yeah, no, they got a little rotation. Oh, okay. So he'll he'll get some some burn here and there, but obviously the the workload. But he was like, okay, him. I need like I need to take this. Got, hey, you gotta let's go. Yeah. yeah wow. He came alive late, like in that second half, he, he was running that thing. That's awesome. He's run that thing good. I think he had a touchdown over 100 yards rushing something. So good. Defensively, man, I think we got to start talking about. Number 27? We got to start talking about these defensive backs and how they're playing mm-hmm. as a group. 27, Tig Brown, first interception of the season. Last week he was telling me, he's like, man, I'm, 
I need to make more plays. Like, I'm, I need, I'm like, hey, bro, listen. Just focus on playing hard, doing things the right way, and it'll come. Mm-hmm. And then we're in the locker room before the game, and he got a grin just all the way across his face, like just happy as, as can be mm-hmm. to be playing and that night. I'm like, you must have got a good night. I'm always I'm always messing with him, telling him like that. <laughs> I'm always asking, did he get get a good night's rest the night before? Like, mm-hmm. just did he sleep? Because uh, he he was telling me that he don't be getting don't begin to sleep in so now i'm now i'm on him all the time about sleeping but anyway i'm like well, boy you must have had a good night's rest he's like boy i slept 10 hours <laughs> you know sunday night you can sleep in can't relate can't relate Mm-mm. it's all right we don't need 10 hours but um yeah so he he was already i could tell he was ready to go and then he had the interception early which when you get that pick early it's in the nice. game nice set your whole game up yeah now everything on t- uh, everything from there on out now, first of all now you're in the zone because you just made a big play and then uh, everything after that is just icing on the cake. On the cake. Mm-hmm. So he made that big, big play. Diamador Lenore Demo, mm-hmm. all pro, all pro types type stuff he's doing right now. You almost cursed there. No, I, I was gonna say season, but then oh. I was like all, all pro type stuff. Oh, okay. All pro season. <laughs> I don't curse, honey. I don't even know what type of language. I don't get fired up when you start talking about football. <laughs> Oops. Uh, um, but yeah, all pro Demo. Okay. Nickel corner, outside corner, back to back games um, with interception. Oh really? Oh wow! Yeah, you almost had an interception. I did. Speaking of them, I know. Speaking in ints, I put that. Big so what up. was that considered? Since it wasn't an interception. Pass breakup. Pass breakup. I put that paw, put that claw up there, and it hoping, it, hoping it would just stick to those sticky gloves that they make these days, and it just didn't. Didn't. And then I look at the jumbotron. As soon as that, as soon as it happened, and I look at the jumbotron of the replay, right behind me. Diamador Lenore. Ready? Wait, ready, waiting for yeah. another pick number two. Yeah. And then you just see me bam, batting out of the air. He's oh. like, bro. And I'm like, bro. And then I seen, I'm like, oh, bro. Sorry, dog. Uh, That's the worst. I know, but you were trying to do it. We greedy out there. Yeah. We all trying to get a little, a little piece. <laughs> but uh, yeah. And um, it was so funny, too, because they just did a little podcast together this past week. Who? For the 49ers. Oh. Speaking of podcasts. And they were over there talking about me. Remember I told you they were saying like something about like, man, Fred, he just... Because they were talking about like East Coast versus West Coast or something. Players who play who were from the East Coast and versus the West Coast. And they're like, you know who's from the West Coast? It's Fred. And they're like, Tig, who's from the East Coast, is like, nah, man, Fred. Fred from like a different planet or something. <laughs> And Zemo's like, man, he just can't do nothing wrong. You need to like tie his shoes wrong or something. <laughs> they was over talking about me. And I'm like, that's hilarious. hilarious. And then they go get two interceptions. Yeah, I know. Crazy. That's awesome. Boys balling. All pro. So yeah, we need to just continue to get better as a group. Um, other players of the game, you know, Nick Bose is always a beast. I thought Devondre played great. Um Flanagan fouls, special teams. Every time I looked up, I seen him just smacking some. Really? Smacking some. And he, he was like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying to I was trying to get out there. I was trying to get active. <laughs> Feeling himself. <laughs> so yeah, you know, everybody, everybody did that, did their part on Sunday night. And yeah, that's that's about all I'll have to say about that. Okay. Well, that's good. What grade would you give the Niners? A plus. Really? Yeah. It was good. Uh, it Anytime you beat the it Cowboys, was it was that. an A plus to no me. <laughs> <laughs> well, no A plus, but uh, hey, I appreciate it, honey. How many years have we beat them in a row? Um, I don't know, it's but been... we beat them last year, right? We beat them That's every good. every That's year. Good. I've been here. That's good. We got a we got a nice tough schedule coming up. I'm seeing here, right, right here on this little list. I usually don't look ahead, but they're saying for the uh the month of November, we got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on the road, Seattle Seahawks at our house. We have to go into Lambeau Field with the Packers, That's, and then yeah. into Buffalo Bills. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. So we got a, we got us a. Bucks are at home. Got us a gauntlet, as they call them, huh? The Bucks are at home, right? It is not. It's on the road. Oh, I thought they were. I'm gonna fly home. to Florida. Well, who, well, who do we play at home? I don't even know. We just got Seattle. We have one home game in November. And that's a few two days before your birthday. Wow. It's on the seventeenth, right? My birthday. No, the game. <laughs> Silly. He's always trying to act like I don't know when his birthday is. I'm like, okay. We I don't know care you're... about my birthday. Fred, we care about your birthday. It's a beautiful day. Thank you, honey. That's wonderful of you. 
Um, but yeah, that's that's basically all I have to say about that. Um, we got to make sure we get right this this bye week because that's that's a gauntlet, right? What there. would you if you were mentoring other younger NFL players? What would you tell them to do, use their bye week as? You know, like what what do they need to go into bye week thinking they need to, you know, get out of it? When I think of bye week, I think of rest and recover. There's very few times in an NFL season where you're able to get a, a kind of a, a reset, a, re, a rest and recovering situation. That's not what the NFL is. The NFL is go, go, go. You play a game, you beat yourself up, your neck sore, just like mine is right now. <laughs> And guess what? They don't care. You better you better go get a massage. You better go do something to get that soreness out because, boom, we're getting right into the next week of preparation. Mm-hmm. And then, boom, you got to go do it again on Sunday again and again and again and again. And people outside, they don't care about how you feel. They don't care if you got banged up the, the week before. They don't, they don't care if you lost the game the week before. You better show up and you better show out mm-hmm. and play the best game you ever played in your life. Mm-hmm. That's just that. That's just what you got to do. So then a bye week allows for that reset whether it's physical mental emotional spiritual whatever reset recovery that you need you better get it okay what out of those that you just said do you need all of them no pick really (laughs) all of them yeah okay everybody needs l i mean i don't know like some people maybe need some more some more than the others but yeah all you need all of them okay you need to find ways to get all of them in me too in my opinion oh (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> she wanted to make sure she slid that in me too yeah go ahead honey what, which one do you need no no i want you what i want you to get out of this is like relaxation i want your mind to be relaxed mm. i want your here's another okay this is good you're bringing this up okay okay here's another thing i would say to the young fellows out there because they a lot of folks here's the issue a lot of fellas they hear rest and recover and they think oh Man, I just need, I, I'm going to go kick my feet up, kick my feet up, <laughs> get on a couch and just lay down. Uh-huh. And eh, wrong. That's exactly what you're not supposed to do. Yeah. Because guess what? You kick your feet up and lay on that couch for an entire week. What do you think you're going to look like? The, your the, body's going to lock up. <laughs> your body has just gotten used to going out, moving every single day, hitting people, doing all that sort of stuff. And then you just completely relax and don't do anything for an entire week. What do you think is going to happen? Yeah. So when I mean rest and recover, I mean like active rest, active recovery. Things to still keep the body moving. We're going to go flowing. on a few hikes. I don't know a hike. hike. I don't know about a hike. Maybe a nice stroll. Maybe, maybe a nice stroll. A nice family walk. walk. Family walk sounds fantastic. Okay. No, keep the keep the blood moving. Keep the blood moving. And then don't det- don't just fully detach mentally because – you're you're literally in the season. You don't. It's not the off season where you just go. Oh, now I get to go live regular life. You're still in an NFL season. Mm-hmm. Get your iPad out. Look at a little tape. Do a little self scout. Where, where can I be better going into the next next week mm-hmm. and to finish out the season? Mm-hmm. Where where have I done well? Where where can I make some improvements? Now we're talking. Now things are grooving. Now you're setting yourself up for some success. Okay. Thought I just put that out. So there. those the were that were that three things you said. You said because you were. You, I think you said something about you wanted me to relax, and I'm like, yeah, relax. I don't know what that means, I but I know, I know what you're trying to get at. Right. But I'm like, my mind's always going to be going. You just not be on edge as much as you would if no, you I, had a, a game on. Yeah, Sunday. absolutely not. No, it's a completely different edge you got to have when you're going out to battle. Okay. Versus going out to. Rest and recover. Rest and recover. You so you're saying don't you, take though. the flight to Vegas. You always got to. Yeah, don't, don't. No, don't do don't that. Do that. No, hell That's no, not that. what you need to do these you next few days. I, I'm anti No, I know. But like some of these guys, like they're like, okay, let's. Some guy's going to be flying back to Florida. Should, I know. Long it's flight. so far. Flying to the East Coast. I know. Building up all the in- inflammation in your body. Here's a question. I, oh, wow. We just got lots of questions. So it, let's hear it. Last one. If, I, know, I like your questions, honey. If we lived like, let's say we lived in, I lived in Florida with the, the baby or we had like, we were in Florida, like that was like our home base. Would you fly out to Florida or would we fly out here probably if we're not already out here? Because, you know, some people have to live by coastal mm. and they, they can't just be out here the whole time with their, with their husbands. Or, That's a tough go. Yeah. That's a tough go. Unfortunately, you have to get on. Uh, you have, have to, to go, right? Yeah. yeah. 
it's hard. People have are so live so far away with kids and families and they gotta make the flights. Mm-hmm. They gotta make those flights. Yeah, no, we wouldn't we wouldn't set our, ourselves up like that, but yeah, we, that would have be learned not to happen. That's when it's like, okay, take the long flight. But if we're going to When it comes to family, you gotta do what you gotta do. Right. I just hope everyone has a relaxing, great bye week. We, I mean, the first as soon as the season the season schedule comes out, I'm looking at what when bye week is. <laughs> it's the first thing I do, and I start planning. That's wonderful. Um, because I, I know I'm gonna by that time I'm gonna be looking forward to it so so much. Um, so I'm excited, and it's it's even sweeter since we're just coming off this win. So mm-hmm. it's gonna be great. Yeah, we're four and four. You know, in my mind, that's basically zero and zero. Yeah. You get to go into the buy and see where you know what type of what type of year do you want to have going forward? Who do you want to be? Everything's right there in front of you. I think we have everybody we need. I think the the you know, the mindset is there. The leadership's there. You guys seem to be more in sync this game, I will say. You look like you were having fun and everyone was like on the same team. Okay. You know? Let's talk a little bit. That's what it seems like to talk me. Talk about it. <laughs> so it does seem like to me. I like that. I like because that. Because remember on the on the way home from the Chiefs game, we were just, you know, talking, 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 and I just was like, it just doesn't look to me as a viewer, mm-hmm. like it just doesn't look cohesive. Like something is just like not clicking and that I mean that Sunday. I'm not saying as a whole, but just mm-hmm. it looked just so off. Mm. And I will say this Sunday like it looked more like, you know, in sync. Okay. Look what we, we knew what we were doing. We knew what we wanted. We knew what... I don't know. Listen, honey, I love, I love the feedback. This is great. Yeah. I felt like we felt like we looked like a, a different team. Like yeah. Or I guess... And you felt fake. good, too. Yeah, you, could, you, can kind of, you can kind of feel the energy. Yeah, bit. exactly. And it ain't about being fake about it, either. It's about... No. Like, you know, energy comes from making plays. Yeah. It, it comes from executing at a high level. Right. You do those things, that's when energy comes. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, that's what we knew. We had the key now... How do you can how do you know, consistently how do you consistently bring that week in and week out? And then hopefully after bye week we'll have some some of the injured guys back. Mm-hmm. Maybe that would help things a little bit. Mm-hmm. So Absolutely. things on the right track. Absolutely. So couldn't agree more. Hopefully all good things ahead. Honestly. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that's enough talk about some football, huh? Let's go ahead and transition to our favorite part of the of the of the show, <laughs> to Sydney's corner. Sydney's corner. I'm mm-hmm. in a corner. I'm We're gonna go ahead and spin this seat. around a little bit. And put you on the hot seat and talk okay. talk talk a little bit about yourself. So our first question is: Last week we spoke about Bo getting closer to speaking. He was doing a little bit of babbling, a little yeah. bit of. Da, 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 da. In an ideal world, who would you, whose name would you like him to say first? Well, he's gonna say your name first because all he says is da 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 da. da. Like that's what his mouth is doing right, right but now. Ideally, it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter because the moment that he says like "mama" and looks at me in, in my eyes, like I literally could cry. <laughs> it'll me. It'll just be. <laughs> it'll just be like it. That it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to me because when that happens, it doesn't matter if it's first or second. Like I don't care. I just want that. It's moment. more about the intent, not even him. Just kind of like. You know, yeah, yeah, around, yeah. It's fumbling the around and saying it like him fumbling yeah. around right now. Like he doesn't saying, know your name's blah, blah. Dada yet. Exactly. Yeah. He just kind of like saying. He just, he just says it and it makes bit. you feel good. And I'm like, you'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. But it'll be better when he actually knows what he's saying. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, my sister-in-law Bailey, she was talking yesterday about how Kenzo, her son's around like 18 months old, and um, how he like when she says like now I walk into a room and he says like mom. Like it lights up, and that's when it's like okay, like Come on. you know, that's what you live for. So I can't wait for that. No, uh, yeah, me neither. But I also like him just me babbling too, right now. Okay, you you told us about your your custom jersey. Um, when it comes to, however, let's let's kind of going off of that little jersey situation. When mm-hmm. it comes to the fashion part of getting ready for these NFL games, who who inspires you that you see around the league? Oh, maybe maybe dressing up a little who bit. Inspires? me um kayla jones is she is everything oh my gosh she's everything and more right now her husband's playing for the broncos that's right and he's Shout him out. incredible yeah. um and broncos are having a good little season so far huh they're doing okay they're doing really good doing really she right. is the standard kayla jones holy smokes really? if i need any kind of spice 
I look to her. Okay, Because wow. she's going to have the answer. Mm-hmm. She's just off the top of my head because I've been seeing so much of her stuff. She's killing it. She just like launched her brand of mm-hmm. like football bags are adorable. So cute. Um, but she's just been on my mind because she's always, she's just, she's a standard. There's so many other girls. There's, um, I mean, there's so many I could say, but she's definitely on top of my list right now. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's Give credit awesome. where it's due. Absolutely. Go, go Jones. Go Jones. The Joneses. The- they're such a cute family. They're Their great. daughter. They're so cute. I can't. Hey, DJ Jones, come back home, brother. I we know. Miss you. Gosh, come back. Okay, great. Well, that's fantastic. Uh, how how do you um? Oh, this one's funny. What's the difference in my mood on a win versus a loss? Well, just go listen to last week's episode. <laughs> you guys will see. <laughs> because I was like pulling his teeth last yeah, two games. Yeah, I guess I didn't really take much of yeah, an answer. He was in a horrible mood. Horrible. Yeah, I, I mean, I, the last thing I want to do, oof. the last thing, the very, very last thing I want to do is sit here and talk into a microphone after we lost the game. I know. So I guess I don't know what we're going to do. If we're not going to lose a game, we're not but even if we lose again, another game. It's going to okay. be an amazing podcast the rest of the way through here. And the thing is, like, you're never like mean or ugly or like sassy after like a week like that because, you know, it's two bad weeks after another. But I can, you're, you're just drained and you're depleted and you're just in a funk, in a big funk. I'm just the guy. I'm the guy that looks at the, the the players around the league who they're on. They're on teams that just are not doing well, and they're over there. They're, you know, doing stuff like this. And I'm like, I'm just that um, that silly fan because I'm a fan of the game. Mm-hmm. I'm that silly fan that's just like, ah, oh, that guy. He doesn't. He doesn't care about what's going on, and you know, mm-hmm. trying to. You think that any extracurricular takes away from your mental focus? I think it can. Yeah. I think it can. I think you have to be the right type of cat mm-hmm. to be doing this and then still be locked in on the on the side. So, yeah. fortunately, I guess I'm that I'm that cat. Yeah. So yeah, that's all I'll say about that. Um, how do you create a community for your followers on social media? I hope that anyone that follows me and that keeps up with my life, our life on socials, just knows who we are, and I try to be as normal and up you know, upfront and honest as I can with my followers. Sometimes, I mean, when Fred and I were just started dating, he was like, man, like, I can't believe you actually do this. Like literally like all day, like you put everything out there. And I have had to dial back of putting everything out there just because of where we're at in life now. I feel like when I go into pregnancy and being so vulnerable and open and literally taking my followers through every step of pregnancy, delivery, postpartum, that really, to me, created a huge community. Because before I had just, you know, a lot of football community and a lot of bachelor community. But then when I became pregnant, it was just like a lot of moms um, or moms-to-be or, you know, family-oriented women that would follow me. And that, I think, is my community that I want to be in Mm -hmm. as well as that's the kind of content I like to consume. So I feel like just like doing that has really made me find my little niche. I think you do a great job, honey. Thanks. And yes, you're right. I've never been a a big fan of the social media stuff. I'm probably the least big fan of it. I know. However, I think you do a great job of just the transparency of it all. Just, you know, people connect with realness. Yeah. Being real. Right. And obviously. Because you can go out and follow the people that post the Rolls Royce and the diamonds and the this and then that. <laughs> okay, listen. But that's everybody not. everybody got their own thing. Everybody right, right, thing. right. But that's not me. And if I did, if I, like, I can't, like, connect to that. We ain't got no Rolls Royces. We ain't got no Rolls Royces. No, we posting, don't. So, hey, right, it's, it's exactly. So I like more of just like, what am I cooking for dinner? I'm feeding my dogs the farmer's dog. I'm going and getting Bo from, like, his um, Halloween costume and this, that, and the other. And, like, what we're doing for – I just, like, that's – it's just, like, every day. But everybody, you're right, has their niche. My niche is just, you know, it's everyday stuff. It's everyday stuff. And it works great. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, that's about it for Sydney's corner. Thanks. However, not the hot seat. I I got I think I have one more because it is Spooktober. Mm-hmm. Um, is there a favorite Halloween movie? Well, yeah, because I don't do scary movies. Scary. No, no, anything. no it ain't gotta be. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It ain't gotta be no like a horror film. Right, it's right, like right. A, you know, a and mine just immediately went to that, and I was like, no. But my favorite Halloween, which I haven't even watched a Halloween anything. I haven't. 
like you know, Hocus Pocus comes to mind. Wow. Beetlejuice comes to mind. Okay. I don't even think I've ever watched that. I've watched like bits and pieces. Um, like Ghostbusters. Okay. It's like a how have you seen that one? Uh, not really. No. Um, <laughs> Ghostbusters. That's a Halloween film. I feel. I mean, it could be because of Ghostbusters. Yeah, I guess that's ghosts in it. Yeah. And people will dress up like that for Halloween and stuff. Correct. I'll, I'll, um, give, it, I'll give it the I think if I had to choose... Well, here's the thing. I am upset. You know, my I'm like a Harry Potter person. Mm-hmm. So Harry Potter could be... I'm a Harry Potter Christmas person. Instead of, but some people really hang on to Harry Potter for Halloween. And I was like, I don't know. To me, I've Harry Potter is you, Christmas. Yeah, why is that? It just is. Harry Potter is Christmas. Everything... Her, Harry Potter's Christmas. It's yeah. December first. Harry Potter's on the television. That's just because Monday through Friday. That's because Sydney said it was. No, I feel like that's like a no, a, like a pretty common thing. Common thing that Harry Potter's on on the television during Christmas. During Christmas. During December. Yeah. Hmm. I thought Home Alone was on during Christmas. And, and that it's not the only one. Four Christmases. Four, yeah. Oh my God. Let me tell you something. Fred Warner will watch Four Christmases over and over. This Christmas is one of our favorites. Wow. With Chris Brown. Wow. I'm not gonna do it, but. Go ahead, I, sing I, <laughs> Give us, a little, give us a little one too. I'm not gonna. What are you saying? No, it's okay. My wife but, is saying, guys. Um, she, got, she got some vocals on her. Favorite Halloween? I just would say Hocus Pocus. We got to We got to turn that one on. Also, another Christmas film that I really got really into last year is, oh my gosh, I'm gonna. I think it's The Nightmare Before Christmas on. It's like a Disney. Is that the one with the skeleton? Yes. Now? Is that good? Loved it. Really? I watched it so many times last year and it, I really got into that. Okay. You need to, we need to watch that. Maybe Hocus Pocus first. Have you never seen Hocus Pocus? No, no, I've seen Hocus Pocus. That's why I prefer to watch that one first. Oh, well, The Nightmare Before Christmas is a Christmas film. Oh. I know you. I know you. It's kind of. It's kind of giving kinda Halloween. Both. Yeah. Kind of like a Harry Potter. Like Harry Potter. <laughs> you completely made that up. <laughs> Wait, with what? The freaking is... Harry Potter and Christmas. Are you kidding me? Yeah, no. Harry Potter is Christmas. Okay. It's a Christmas thing. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Uh, any uh, significant updates here? With oh, I guess hold on. But before we get into that, mm. uh, this is back when you were beginning of the show talking about date nights. Oh yeah. And now here's your time to talk about last week's date night. Okay, last week's date night. There was a little bit of a. Oh my! I'm not a little really, bit of a something in there. I don't have the energy to speak energy? on this. Do you want to tell it? Well, no, it's, it's nothing. It doesn't need to be this huge ordeal. I, all right, we had planned on on maybe going. Fred and doing wanted a to do house. a haunted house, and I all week was like, "Yeah, let's do it." And then, even though I knew that she wasn't really down like that because she don't like scary stuff, and I'm like, "Honey, like you can go ahead and say no." Like I, I, I wanted to, to though, I did kind of want to, <laughs> but you wanted to go with like a group. I wanted to go with a group, and then so and it wasn't everyone... as scary. Yes, but that didn't happen. It would just be me and you. So, but the group thing didn't happen. Right. So then you got you got you kind of caved in a little bit. You're like, I don't want to do that. And because I kept getting closer, and I was a little bit getting a little nervous, a little nervous. Okay, no bit, no big deal. So then instead, we went to our favorite sushi spot, had a beautiful, gorgeous dinner. Okay. And then we watched the first game of the World Series. World Series, <laughs> and that was so entertaining, so fun. I was watching Show High, Money Man, mm. and um. Boy, is he worth every penny because mm-hmm. he is a beast. Mm-hmm. Go Dodgers, so I have to say. Watch a beautiful uh, game. We were for the Giants. They're not in it, so go Dodgers. Dodgers are the mortal enemy of the Giants. I know, but if the Do- the Giants aren't in, then you naturally would t- would root for the Dodgers because you're from California, no? No. Okay. That's like saying like back in the year that we didn't make the Super Bowl and the, and the Rams were in the Super Bowl. We root for the Rams. It's all totally of a different. It's totally different. It's completely different. <laughs> oh guys like if bama is not in the national championship and it's like georgia if it, and it's auburn and georgia we're rooting for auburn no, no 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 i'm saying like let's say this alabama's not in the national championship is not in the natty mm-hmm. it's georgia and some random team never that you don't even care about Come never on. georgia no, huh? no never always the random person because i don't live in georgia you live in california yes you're from here, no? So it's about where you, where the state that you're living in. Well, how would you you're root not for from, a, You're not from California. I'm not. But you want to root for the Dodgers. But you, we, you are from California. I'm not rooting for the Dodgers. The Padres aren't in it. <laughs> <laughs> and neither are the Giants. So why would oh you not root for God. the Dodgers? Because you don't root against the team that's your mortal enemy. 
You just proved that. That's so strange to me. Because if, like I said, if Auburn and like LSU or Auburn and Georgia or Auburn and Tennessee were in the natty, I would always root you root for Auburn. Because Alabama. Listen, it, there's not a, there's not a, there's not as much. Comment down below if you agree with my theory or Fred's theory. Because I think mine's right. I mean, I'm going to be real. You're going to get scorched <laughs> in the comments. <laughs> if they if you allow this to go in the comments, you're going to oh get y'all scorched. Okay. Because them Giants fans don't play about that, that Giants Dodger situation. All right, Giants or Padres? The whole like, BLA. That, you remember that in them chants when we go and watch them, them baseball games? Mm-hmm. B-L-A, B-L-A. You think all of a sudden they're like, go L.A., go L.A. They, I feel they, like, yeah, they, yeah, they a little bit. If, the, if you're, if you're from World California, series? yes. Watch the, we watch the, the game. But if you're – never mind. You said it's completely different with the whole Rams situation. What were you going to say? That's what I'm saying. Like your, your whole theory – should hold up with the the situation that I what's just another the what's the other team that used to be in California where they're not here anymore, or they're from Oakland? The Raiders. Oh no, we can never do that. Yeah, so for some reason it's different. It's like them. when the Oakland Raiders were still in Oakland and they go to Super Bowl. <laughs> go <laughs> Oakland. Where's the silver and black? Where's my giddy up? It's different for some reason because I'm I'm in this. You know, like this is their life. Oh hell. <laughs> So because we're not in baseball, then now you can go through for the I Dodgers. guess so. I guess so. Yeah. So you've kind of flipped around your thought process a little bit. Let's say that. Don't go in the comments. <laughs> say, chat, don't roast me in the comments. Tell, tell everyone what happened to, ga- to date night. Why don't you? Oh, basically, long story short, since it's been a huge long story or that's went off on a nice long tangent. We went to the sushi, the sushi situation, and then after the dinner was over, <laughs> Cindy said, I still want to go do I, – I just want to go look. Yeah, just at the look. Haunted house I just want to go take, and, a, take, take a, a little, peek. Even though she had no – she knew damn well she wasn't going to go in the haunted house. She just wanted to go look to see how scary <laughs> it was going to look. So we we drive on over there to the spot that I had picked out. And what do we find? It's just a big old lot that's empty. No haunted house. And I said, you're kidding. And then he goes on his phone and it's like the, – The little situation online that I had, I had read said 2023 – there's no That's why you don't room. leave a man to plan anything because Here you go again with the, planning. the planning. One thing that you could learn how to do after football is just like take like a planning course on how to plan things. You want? <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> what are you gonna say? But you want to talk what about the comments? Gonna, they posted, what are you they say? posted that thing about the uh, about planning the the bye week. I didn't boy, even they, look. It was what did they the say? Comments. What did they, they say roasting. about me? What they, give me one. Huh? Tell me what they say. I uh, know we we can go back. <laughs> what, you went to look. I didn't even look. <laughs> Boy, the chat was going crazy. In there. What the chat? chat? Was going crazy comments. That's what they be calling it. Chat comments. What were they saying? Nothing, honey. We we'll, we could go look at it after the after the podcast. You know what they can do. Yep. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting spicy <gasps> here at the Warner House. Next question. Warner. Next question. Let's talk about. We already kind of talked about Bo and his uh, what he's mm-hmm. been getting into, so yeah. not much more else to report there. No, let's do some questions. Swim, swim classes are going great. Yeah, he had so much fun this week. Okay, let's we'll just go into fan questions. Okay, let's see. Um, all right, so Amanda Coley asks if Fred could be seated as a fan at any historical Niners game, which one would it be? Whoa, that's kind of putting me on the spot there. I don't. I'm not. To uh, well, let's just say, like, if you were a fan, you'd no, love to watch like a, on my on my history. Well, like a 49er Cowboys game, like just like that kind of rivalry, or a specific game. Because obviously, I want to see Steve Young play because he a Brigham Young guy. But then there's this aura about the Joe Montana days. Everybody talks about Joe Montana, obviously Jerry Rice. So being able to go back and watch them over at Candlestick doing what they do. Oh you know, yeah, and go back and watch one of those oh, Super Bowls okay, when, yeah. they won, when they won it. Yeah. And be there for a Niner Super Bowl win. Mm-hmm. I think that'd be pretty nice. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. So that's my final answer. And then we got at Anna Lily six nine nine five. It's early, Sydney. But do you think you will have an overprotective mother in law when Bo grows up? I think I'll be an overprotective mother. Do you think you will be an overprotective mother in law when Bo grows up? Even though it's real early. Early, yeah. Oh. 
you know what? Do you let your mind wander to that that point in life? I don't like to because it makes me sad. Oh. Because uh, I never want him to leave my house. So. Yeah, that, that whole thing got to die. So, I don't know, overprotective, like I want him to spread his wings and, and find his way in life, but I'll definitely hope that he'll be a mama's boy to where if anything goes wrong, he'll call me. But I know once you're married, you're not supposed to do that. Like you go to your, <laughs> <laughs> you go to your wife instead because that can create whatever. You see, where, you see what your first answer was. Where yeah. You, where your mind wandered Totally. First. Yeah. I want him to come to me for everything, for every day of his life. Yeah. Okay. So, Mama Warner. I know. Laura Warner. We, we understand. Laura 2.0 right here. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> We just love Mama Warner. Okay. So, Tricky Lokes for Fred. Someone called you the Predator. Is it cool if we make that a thing? You do remind me of the Predator for, from the movies. I've never the seen The Predator? The Predator. Oh, hell. I can't do that one. You like that? I like the whole Predator thing. Like, I, I understand. Like, I, I kind of got that. You know, what is that? I've never seen any that movie. Is it a Alien movie? Alien vs. Predator or just Predator? Any of that. I've never seen any of that. We'll have to add that to the list with uh, Hocus Pocus. <laughs> <laughs> and The Nightmare Before Christmas. But uh, yeah, there's like this little Predator, these Predator cats that walk around. They got these little dread, they got the little dreadlocks that like, that like hang out the back and just be slicing cats up. Got it. Then that's me. Okay. So I guess I'm the Predator is what they be saying. Oh, that's cool. I heard them play the little Warner Brothers. Uh, movie oh, I love that. Every time they do that, it's oh, so cool. I like cool. that one. It's just awesome. We got to get them playing that more often. I'm in full control of that, though. But yeah, Predator, we'll probably pass on that one. I do like the Predator comparison, but Predator doesn't sound very... Doesn't sound great. Mm. We'll keep it going, though. Keep it going. We'll see if it, we'll see if it, if it catches at some point. And then next question, uh, Crazy Bunny Mama. Wow. I love how Sydney has Bible study. What is your favorite Bible verse? Wow. Put her on the spot. I know. Wow, Put her is... on the spot, chat. Favorite Bible verse, go. That is kind of a... <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'll say one. Or not even a verse. I'll just say the book of Psalm 23 uh, recently has really resonated with me. Okay. Uh, because it talks about walking through the valley. Even though, even though you walk through the darkest valley, uh, I fear no evil. Mm -hmm. That one's I mean, obviously so powerful. Mm -hmm. And I just like, it, it's like the perfect book to read right before you're about to go out and play a game. Like, oh, just, totally. like just completely just like let go of all your worries and, you know, anything. And you're just like, hey, I'm, I'm good. Like, I know, you know, that I'm good. Yeah. With, with, with God on my side. I um this week we're not meeting because we have bye week and everything, so I can't make it. But um we are like our kind of not homework, but we always read um you know our our study book. And this week up there's there's some Corinthians in there that I've been reading, and that's really I mean that's such a powerful book, but that's really been like heavy goods, but good stuff, really you know positive, not. It was a good, it's a good book. So that's where I'm at right now with my journey um, with Bible study. So I've been enjoying that a lot. I don't know if I have a favorite verse right now, but that is my favorite, like the the book I'm in that I'm really enjoying. And last week it, we talked a lot about Peter, like I said, and that, and it's just funny how every, you know, every phrase or every, anything that you read in that moment and that whatever space you're in mentally I feel like you can resonate it with it anywhere so it's just it's, it's funny how every time I'm reading or if I'm going through my my bible study books and stuff I'm like wow that like hits so close to where I'm at right now with life or whatever I'm walking through so it's just I don't know it's really important I think if anybody if you're thinking of ever you know joining a bible study or wanting just like a prayer group or wanting to just learn more about the bible like it's religious or not it's an incredible book just to read if you're you know you don't have to be religious but i think it's just such an important thing to do just to know the history it's just like an incredible incredible story regardless of your beliefs so i agree yeah so that's been awesome mm -hmm. um so oh, let's see here we've got one more for fred and it's gonna be brenda verar 97 weirdest pregame activity you've seen a teammate do fred 
Oh, heavens. Um, well, the first thing that just came to my mind, which was a topic of conversation this past game, George Kittle, and he's already talked about how he throws up what? before every game. No, he doesn't. Before every game. He he forces himself to be sick? I don't know if he forces it or if he like legit just like it just... Fred, I don't want to talk about that. That is absolutely disgusting. Okay, okay, okay. I, look, look. Obviously, whatever he's doing has been working. so disgusting. But he, I literally asked him. I said, I made sure to ask him, like, bro, every game That just doesn't even make sense. That. He's like, every single that game. That doesn't make sense to me. Every single game I've done it. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, the throwing up before the game. I heard Josh Allen does that with the Bills. What? I guess, I don't know. It's like a nerves, like a nervous thing. And you just, what, what? Okay, enough. That's enough. I've already seen enough throw up today. The dog, the someone at, at, at the little gym threw up everywhere okay. next to the baby, and I was freaking out. Anyway, man, uh, continue to uh, to watch the Warner House, folks. Wherever you uh, <laughs> wherever you watch YouTube, Apple Podcast, Spotify, um, listen, watch. We we try our best to to give you what you need here at here at the Warner House, folks. And uh, yeah, we're we're gonna enjoy this bye week, rest and recover, active. Rest and recovery, okay? Keeping the mind sharp and locked in. That's the key. Again, I'm your host, Fred Warner, here with my beautiful wife, Sydney Warner. And this is The Warner House. Peace. Bye, guys. <laughs>